really a, a, a lot of my time would be spent with the script um, and then just sort of you know repetition of, of what the, the story uh, I was when I started out acting very obsessed with the sort of you know the method or Stanislavski approach and now I kind of just have a sort of pick and mix of uh, my own versions of that. I mean, I definitely wouldn't be method. Like, I, I like stepping in and out. So to sort of be in character and then step out of it and go back in, I find that um, keeps me fresh and also somewhat sane. Uh, <laughs> and so what was great about this experience was, that, you know, I kind of, you know, just gave myself up to uh, to the way that Terry shoots. Because obviously there was no preparation with the script. It was just um, about, <clears throat> I guess, the main thing with Terry that uh, that w one would have to sort of keep in mind uh, as an actor is the that you have to be prepared to fall on your face over and over again all day, and um, and to be fine with that, to be to be uninhibited. Uh, that's what I think is so impressive about Val Kilmer. He's very uninhibited as a performer. Not, you know, to be not self-conscious, to be making a fool of yourself in front of a whole crew, and uh, yeah. whoever else you know the, of, of the public is there when we're shooting on location. That's the thing we need to just be brave mm -hmm. and go for it. And, uh, yeah, and if if a director and a crew can set that environment, that it's okay. Yeah, it's like we're all family here. Just. Michael was always completely yeah. Fall afraid too. No, I would really call him on his face. He would always, uh, uh, we would just say attack, and uh, yeah. and he was completely, uh, completely fearless uh, about uh, giving himself. He wasn't. You never felt he was trying to create a certain impression or or uh, of himself or uh, do anything to 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 look or appear a certain way or make himself admired or. Or, uh, he would just just com give himself completely, and a very uh, uh, it's such a, an inspiration to work mm. with an actor uh, like Michael because you 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 try to keep up with him, and uh, uh, yeah. not that we did it completely. You've always had <laughs> actors like that, even going back to the, the early. I don't think there's ever been a second of anyone like. Posing in a Terry Malick, you know. What I mean? That's right. Just well, he would shout that out. He was like, "Don't do that, Michael. Looks like you're posing." <laughs> yeah, he'd be like, yeah, I mean, there's not even look at the reality of like Warren Woods or uh, just you know Martin Sheen. Says, you know, just all the actors over here. There's this kind of unvarnished real to, to every one of them. So. Richard Gere in Days of Heaven. Yeah, he's just such a great performance. Yeah, just really kind of <laughs> over the ground. Okay, we'll try another slew of questions. Michael, there's a brilliant scene where you're confronted for having portrayed your friend and you really have to dig deep to bring out all your, your full-blown uh, charm and irresistibleness, you even do a little tap dance. And I was wondering, that side of the character, which obviously throughout the film, but particularly there, were you inspired by people you, I don't know if inspired is the right word, were you thinking about people that are actually like that maybe in the film industry or people you know, or was it just something you were drawing on um, for the moment? Okay, next question. Hi, my question is for Michael. Um, I think you're one of our best actors. Oh, Versatile and dynamic and humble. That's obvious. That's you have worked <laughs> with so many wonderful directors, uh, Steve McQueen, Ridley Scott, yeah, Quentin Tarantino. Okay. Have you ever considered directing? And if so, what would you like to direct? Okay, next question. Uh, my question is kind of twofold, both for Michael and for Terrence. Um, being in the moment, chasing an impulse, finding something that connects, something truly organic, and you're in this moment, and then as an actor feeling like, oh man, really got that, and then hearing the director say like, okay, let's, no, that was posing, that was fake. How did you, what, what, what was your technique for sort of discarding and moving forward with something fresh, and then for Mr. Malik, how do you, how do you personally handle actors? What's sort of your technique for saying like, I cherish this thing that you did, but it wasn't quite what we needed. So, sort of a twofold thing there. Yeah, well, that, that's interesting. What I asked it kind of the first question, but from the very beginning, how much, uh, you know, direction's kind of a lame word, but how much specifics do you think? Um, is your character 
how's it shaped by you, your conception of the character, the ongoing discovery of the character, what, what you're getting from Terry constantly? Or Yeah, it's um, directing such... Uh, and, you know, both you guys are, are masters at it, and it's, uh, it's such an interesting thing to observe as an actor because I guess you only really understand it when you're working with a bad director and you really see what it's like when the wheels fall off. <laughs> because there's so much going on, uh, and in terms of what Terry does, and with the really, you know, I've been so lucky to work with so many great directors, is that they set an environment, as you were saying, yeah, yeah. you know, a, a space where you can feel like you can fail in, and uh, and feel safe in, and um, giving you flavors as opposed to direct sort of commands or mm -hmm. instructions. Uh, you know, provocation, um, uh, and and sometimes you know this. I found this a lot with directors. They're actually better actors than me. You know, I remember Terry would be like, you know, there's a magnificence to the character. And he stood in front of the like, lens, and I was looking. Yeah. I was like, holy shit, <laughs> <laughs> that is magnificent. Yeah. Like, that's pretty amazing. Um, and I think you know, it's it's kind of. With a, an actor and a director, I guess it's kind of like a love affair. There's a chemistry there, and yeah. either the chemistry is there or it's you not. Feel like Terry knows exactly what he wants, and he's guiding you to that. Or no, I feel like in a way he's sort of like we don't know what we're going to find. Let's find it together. <laughs> okay. Um, but you know, maybe he's much smarter than that, and he sees it. But there's never because I have worked with directors like that that basically see it as it is and do their best to you try and push exactly you. Like, yeah. yeah well, and Terry, I find you, that less interesting. For in, in that gladly. spectrum of exactitude for what you pre imagined and finding something you wouldn't have predicted, but you're setting a, you know, an atmosphere, a canvas for. Well, I, I find it very hard to, uh, you know, execute anything that is uh, too uh, preconceived or storyboards. I've mm -hmm. never been able to yeah. work from a storyboard or, or uh, because it's hard. You always have a little bit of the feeling you're trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. And yeah. I think you work that way, Rick. You you uh, uh, you let it. Uh, you let it speak you to you where it will go on the day, yeah. and uh, on the on the day, and you hope it will go uh, someplace, and that you yeah. uh, you've uh, allowed it to uh, allowed it to happen. But uh, if you if you try to uh, uh, make things happen, they start to feel presented. You know, mm -hmm. they start to feel as though they uh, uh, had been the action had been premeditated and. Uh, uh, and was now being presented to you, which starts to make it feel like uh, theater, mm -hmm. which is uh, wonderful in its own right. Yeah. But in the in the movies, you you don't want the movies to be like like theater. And yet, every single detail of film production, from the history of film to the second, is geared toward rendering exact something that's pre preconceived months ago in a script and a thing. You know, there's a lot of pressure typically uh, for for that, for that blueprint, to have it. So that's why I think it's remarkable, you know, that you've created this this form to fit, you know, your language and your, your method to, to capture it is, is so unique. Because it's all, I mean, it, it's frustrating when, you know, you have limited time and budget and actor schedules and, you know, how to still be open for, to find you know, where your spirit is going. But, you know, watching Terry work, and I just, you know, my limited exposure to it is really inspiring and really wonderful because as much as, like, the art department, particularly in a period film, they're like, okay, well, we need to have everything perfect, but everyone's kind of scrambling, but Terry and the actors, the, the, that poetic process is happening, and it's, it was a, it's a beautiful thing, very spontaneous, very, and Terry's very happy in my opinion. He seems like you're in your groove, but the apparatus is is having to just keep that atmosphere working. So I just admire that you've able to find that methodology in the modern film world because it's it's completely unique, you know, it's, to be able to do what you've done. Is... Absolutely, it's yeah. so unique. Uh... I was thinking, you know, it's the most sort of rebel filmmaking I've ever yeah. been part of, for sure. 
be all that too. Um, any questions before the, that? What? Directing? I would like yes. to direct. Uh, what should I direct? Something contained. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one room, exactly. two actors. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I can't remember. Well, I will have... be a splendid director. I'm quite sure of that. So. Some, some actors you work with, and it's the questions they ask and the way they feel. You go, okay, that's it. Well, think about it. The, the history of film, the best job before directing is acting. It's what they don't really teach in film schools. They're not connected to drama departments or acting, but actors have the best. I, I think it's because you have a lot of work. You've worked with a lot of, between your theater work, all your film work, and the variety of, um, a smart actor has a huge palette of experience. And, okay, like you said, bad director. Okay, I won't do that. I won't do that. It's like a player. I have a crappy coach. Okay, that didn't motivate me. That's hurting. So you really can put together if you're thinking that way. So there's no, it's no surprise that if you look at a lot of the top directors, just go down the list, you know. So many have been actors or still are actors. Or it's, it's the best best entry position, I believe. So when are you going to make this movie? Uh, next uh, year. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I've no idea, but, um, uh, you know, it's something that... Uh, it, it's funny, because uh, it's starting off as an actor, obviously it's a very um, uh, unpredictable mm -hmm. career choice. And so I found that I was very focused for so many years, a lot of energy going into sort of... Um, just getting an opportunity to work yeah. and then sort of getting an opportunity to sort of, you know, get a lead role. Uh, and so a lot of it's sort of focused uh, on a singular task. Sure. And since um, I've had the opportunity to work on so many great films and so many great uh, uh, collaborators and directors, I've started to enjoy more and more mm -hmm. the collaborative process. We were talking sure, about yeah. that backstage. That's really something that um, I really marvel at now. The, the, you know, the idea that you get these, this bunch of strangers together at, and they have to sort of gel yeah. and, uh, and create. And that really is, I guess, the, the key to, to making a film is the casting. Not just uh, of what's in front of the camera, right. but what's behind the crew camera. and everybody, uh, and the whole sort of mechanics of how films get made. I, I find that really, really fascinating, and I've enjoyed being sort of um, behind the monitor mm -hmm. more and more yeah. uh, as the years have gone by. And can I say, just of all the Austin filmmakers, it strikes me Terry's the only one who went to high school in Austin. So <laughs> I just that popped in my head, you know, because there's talk. This is such an Austin movie. Uh huh. No, no. That's the ultimate Austin movie, and I think you're the ultimate Austin. You know, like like I said, a lot of us live here, but <laughs> you go back. Uh, you know, you've seen Austin change the most. We we have. It's it's so surprising. My wife and I were talking about when we came down. Even uh, today, there were all these new buildings. This uh, yeah. You go this wait. Hotel where did that across come the street from? we hadn't seen before. We I know. saw the ironworks were still there. Uh, Your film's already a period film, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see the thing. I'm like, oh, that's not there anymore. That, you know. no, that, that's true. That old uh, location, the Alamo Draft House, where yeah. was. We we shot around there, and that's bye bye. Gone, yeah, you know? that's all something else. Uh, <laughs> so, but it's magical to see it. And I love the contrast. Like, there's enchanted rock. You know, there's these wonderful, I guess outside the trip to the Mexico section, which is wonderful, but the, yeah, it's, it's just a great, uh, you know, visual ride, you know, so. I'll try a few more questions. Let's do the. Okay, first of all, uh, Mr. Mallet, congratulations. The movie was wonderful. It was worth the long line. <laughs> I loved it. Um, my question's for Michael. Uh, with all the fans you have around the world, because you're very, 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 very brilliant actor. And so with all the fans you have around the world, um, if you've ever inspired one to write something with you as a central character, like if they've never written, you know, anything professionally, but you've inspired them to write it, would you be ex uh, willing to read it? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Next. 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 And if you are, okay. I, I, yeah. we'll get to that. Right. I have a question for Mr. Malik. Um, whenever Michael was talking about acting and then you would be off to the side shooting a beetle, uh, I just got a rush of images from your films uh, that are seemingly spontaneous imagery or things that aren't necessarily conventional that you would expect to see in a film. Um, and that is something that I 
I think kind of defines your films and my memory. Uh, so his, my question would be, how do you know to trust your instincts or your impulses whenever you see those things or you have those inspirations and you know that you have to document in that moment? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, as you said, the trip in Mexico, it's to me really interesting because as you said at the beginning, there were lots of locations in one, I think it's Yucatan, Mexico. And um, uh, my question is, did you consider like Yucatan in the beginning of the script? Or it was like Chivo has influence in a way? Or I don't know, like, because to me there were some like scenes that were really interesting, like when the, the old lady was like around. So mm -hmm. that's my question. Thank you. Yeah, so, uh, was that three? Um, Can I? So, Hi. Oh, um, <laughs> Breaking I the rules here. Actually, come from Poland, and I was I was in a big shock when I heard um, the most popular uh, Polish prayer uh, to Santa Maria, and I was like, "Am I hearing right? You know that the choir Zdrowaś Mario," mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and it was like. Why? What, what was the purpose? Uh, I was really shocked. <laughs> All right. Well, could, that, could you tell me why? A... Because it's, it's really bothered me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, yeah, that, that, that's its own panel. It'll be this Thursday. There'll be a two-hour panel on the music in this movie. But, uh, yeah, Terry, the, I mean, uh, I think well, you have was... over a hundred cues. No, no, we, we, we do have a lot, and that cue was to uh, show Michael's character suddenly haunted by uh, the death of his uh, death of his wife that in some way he was responsible for and he was realizing that and uh, uh, we didn't expect that uh, anyone would understand the words <laughs> I, I can say that. Yeah. and so it was the it was the suddenly suddenly coming waking up and feeling uh, you, know, uh, you know waking up to a sense of his responsibility and uh, uh, feeling the, agonized by that, and uh, seeing himself just tra trapped in this uh, glass box uh, alone, right. and so the the piece of that piece of music uh, felt right for that, and uh, 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 but uh, it was I think it was for that reason we weren't thinking about the words so much. Okay. Uh, as the feeling in the in the piece, and as for Mexico, we we had always uh, hoped we might go down there. We wanted to show the contrast of another place where where uh, uh, there were brighter kind of life was more out in the open. It was uh, uh, kind of a simpler life that uh, uh, they all uh, could feel. Uh, woke up something up in them and so uh, uh, we uh, yes we we just went down there to Yucatan for uh, uh, a few days to to try and try and show that uh, uh, as, as something that a, a way of life that uh, was was freer more colorful more dramatic and uh, uh, and probably was partly due to the fact that we were uh, working with so many uh, Mexican collaborators, uh, the, the cameraman, the AD, the, I can't remember the sound, I, I, I can't remember that they were all, they were all uh, uh, the assistant, uh, the second assistant, I, I guess, or I, I can't remember, they were, there were quite a number of Mexicans, so it was a great, great uh, pleasure to go, go down there. We had a we had a, a great time. Uh, <laughs> I, we were remembering last night because uh, 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 Michael, uh, uh, there was uh, it was very rowdy. <laughs> wow. So, so Terry, just let me ask the on the music front that cue that she brought up. Is that just something that was on your palate for years and you, you thought emotionally, or is it something music supervisor brings, or what, how would you say the music finds its way into this movie? I, I think we, you know, we just would have a certain number of uh, cues or pieces that, uh, you know, that we liked over the years that's yeah. in a movie project. You know, in the, 
in the in the project on the on the mm -hmm. Avid editing machine, and uh, uh, and so you, I think that we played that, and it seemed to play something in. Uh, uh, it seemed to give a feeling of realization right. to mm -hmm. Michael's uh, Michael's character to reinforce what he was uh, what he was uh, doing at the at that I moment. See. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it's real. You know, we're talking a lot of. I mean, these things. You know, you talk about surface, but I really I'm most moved by the movie. I really think those issues of mortality and finding yourself. You know, these these people searching. That's what strikes me the most. I think. Um, those characters and the the parent relationship, mm -hmm. you know, that that permeates the movie also in just little bits. You know, I feel like this movie, everything you see is the tip of the iceberg, but there's so much underneath all of it. And I think that maybe grows out of your methodology. Like I was saying, you, when you see just a glimpse of a location or something short, that maybe it was a longer scene you shot, but I think that just adds a depth, whether it's a memory from these characters are experiencing, but it just adds to this kind of poetic memory feeling of where am I in the world? You know, that these characters are experiencing. I think we wanted to make it feel too like there were just bits and pieces of their lives and yeah. they didn't, they, they uh, it was like goes to that quotation that, uh, that uh, you know, can you live in this world just moment yeah. to moment, song to song, kiss to kiss, as she says, mood to mood. Yeah. And, and try to create these different moods for yourself, and uh, uh, and go through the world, uh, you know, as as in that quote, uh, without a without a self, just a yeah. sort of uh, you know an eager will mm -hmm. living from one uh, you know uh, uh, one desire to the next, and uh, uh, where does that where does that lead, and uh, uh, what happens uh, with that. With that, uh, what happens to you in that uh, sort of uh, moment to moment, uh, yeah. a life of moments? Uh, uh, because uh, uh, in the in the story, Michael's character, hope you know, imagines there's there's nothing else but that, and that uh, we're in free fall. He says we're we're nobody's home. It's yeah. all just uh, chaos, rock and roll <laughs> yeah. fragments, uh, uh, but. Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, it's 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 a hard thing to to uh, to to convey, and we you know we we uh, didn't know how. So the, doing lots of locations and lots of songs was our our best guess about how to how to how to do that. Well, I, I feel you've accomplished it. You know, just on that on that deep kind of poetic level of just pure. It's kind of a pure cinema in a way. It's just what you feel and how you process the world. One thing reminds you of something else, an interconnection, a separation, a, you know, an alienation, a out of your body feel, a visceral feel. You know, it's, it's really hard to uh, fit that into a typical dramatic structure. Cinema is unique that way. It, it can capture something that no other art form can. And so I appreciate you <laughs> uh, finding that. Was there, there were some questions before. Uh, I don't know. No, anything? I can't remember. Okay. Do we have more? Yes, right now I am. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, if somebody wrote a script. Yeah, my agent uh, is yes. uh, right over always. there. <laughs> uh, you know, you know I, I always sort of, I guess, you know, the, the thing is to, to always be alive to, to new filmmakers, for sure. Always. Okay, excellent. Scripts. <laughs> the best scripts, they find their way. They, they percolate up. Okay, we have time for a few more questions, I think. Hi, I hope you're having an amazing South by Southwest experience, and congratulations. Um, Michael, I was wondering if you could touch on your uh, working with your co-stars, because you and Rooney and all of Natalie, Ryan, are on yeah. such a high caliber, and this kind of stream of consciousness way of filming I was wondering if there was any like magnetic experiences that have really stuck with you that are in the film, or um, ne they ne didn't necessarily make the film, but they happened when you were shooting. And that could also go to Terry, because I'm sure you have different perceptions. Okay, and one more question. 
Um, hi, my question to uh, Richard and Terence is that what is your stance on how do you approach or what is your opinion about um, superhero or comics-based movies like DC, Marvel, superhero movies? Because uh, in my opinion, you represent diametrically the opposite of, of what they stand for. But I'm, I'm just interested. And, okay. and to my, Michael, I'm, I would like to ask that uh, how do you approach these kind of superhero characters when so much is pre-written for you uh, uh, in the role? Thank you. Okay, and the last question here. Then. Yeah, hi. Um, when the cast came on the stage at the Paramount beforehand, they uh, most of you talked about uh, being allowed a, a level of freedom that you weren't sort of accustomed to. And um, I guess the question for Terence, uh, how do you communicate that to the actors in terms of showing that freedom? And uh, uh, to Michael, what are some of the better examples in the movie where you showed that freedom and cut loose? And I had one quite single question, which was the scene in the bar where the um, Ryan Gosling character breaks the beer bottle, and, and, and you sort of look a bit surprised and look at the camera. Was was that was, was was that one of those moments? But I'm just keen to know within the movie, what are some of the more interesting moments where you where you showed that freedom and uh, improvisation, if you like? Yeah. I like that Ryan's the only human in the world who doesn't know you're sleeping with his girlfriend. Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> in the known universe, who doesn't already pick that up? But, um, <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask that question. What a wonderful, you know, the, the only note would be, did you think about casting up this movie a little bit? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You know, what, what, what uh, how do you approach it, Terry? Are there just a lot of actors that you know their work and want to work with them? You run into them? How does it? Well, yeah, they so just say, would you like to make a movie together and, yeah. uh, 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 and try and try and find uh, something uh, that uh, is interesting to all of you? And uh, did Michael's character pre-exist in your mind or knowing no, Michael did you kind of okay yes so there was this character the idea of that making you... a, a character like that who was sort of uh, yeah you know again sort of laughing lost. at the world yeah. uh, 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 cynic who thought nothing really was real or to be taken seriously who uh, did a lot of drugs uh, uh, and he's the, the successful guy what does that say? Hey. Okay. <laughs> He's the rich guy. You could be president someday. <laughs> no, okay. No, okay. Sorry. <laughs> We're talking about casting. <laughs> I can't, I can't remember the other question. The, the, it was about whether it was there was a specific scene. Uh, was it, there was a specific yeah, scene. who's asking you, Michael, about... Um... About working with the other actors. What stuck with me? Um, you know, i, I got to say, it, you know, it really does sort of bring everything down to sort of, you know, boils down to sort of one common denominator. You're just trying to survive altogether because... Um, like you say, you know, we're improvising so much and uh, the whole thing with improvisation is that it can just sort of go horribly wrong unless you're listening to one another and really kind of um, um, cooperating with one another. And luckily, you know, we all found a rhythm with one another. The one thing that really sort of stood out with, for me was Val Kilmer, you know, when I was sort of doing scenes with him, I was like, wow, you know, it was so... Uh, Powerful and uh, and like I say, he had just had this great sort of uninhibited quality to him. Uninhibited, yeah. Oh, and as far as the superhero movie thing, oh, um, yeah. the only superhero I like is the one that he plays. What is the approach any different? Um, you know, it's just different in bigger films because it's you, really the only real difference is the amount of people and, and the time. So, uh, you know, if we were working on an independent film, you, you know, you can end up shooting 20 pages of dialogue in a day. And, you know, if you're working on a big film, that's 20 pages of dialogue in a month. You know, it's really that kind of time difference. And it's about sort of uh, uh, pacing yourself accordingly. 
and, and, and keeping yourself sort of, you know, in a zone where you're not getting bored with, with the waiting around. Uh, but essentially, you know, the building blocks are the same. If I'm playing somebody who's in a comic book mm -hmm. and, you know, in a fantastical situation, I've got to make a reality out of that um, for myself, uh, and then hopefully it will translate for an audience. I'm kind of jealous of actors. They get this, through a career, such a wide variety of experience, such a huge... We're, we're directors, we're all kind of stuck in our own, like we're making some version of the same, our own methodologies, our own thing, but an actor's thrust into very different environments. And yeah, it's the same building blocks, but the demands are so different. Yeah. Plus you guys, yeah. I guess, you know, you're, you're in pre-production, then you're shooting, yeah, then you're in post-production. It's a long process. Yeah, yeah. Long for sure. An actor's like, okay, I'm here. I'll see it. Yeah, I yeah. start next week. <laughs> did, you something else. did you fix that film? Yeah. yeah did you fix but then you actors know? also have the out. Uh, you get a bunch of actors together. What do they talk about? Oh, I did this Each shitty other. film five years ago. That they can, but directors, you kind of have to own it. It's like, well, I put so much time into it. I, you know, you yeah. can't. I don't. I'm not. I don't dislike anything. Just because, you know. But actors can be kind of glib about uh, right. their experiences. Let's yeah. say it's frightening to hear how they talk about films behind our backs. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, well, I think our. The, there's a little clock here that tells us how long this thing is. It's run down to zero. So I think we're, we're, um, we're done here. Well, you guys have a great rest of your festival here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Terry. Go see some